So you may have noticed by now that the Harris campaign is up to its eyeballs in celebrity supporters, people with lots of big followings, big voices, whatever it may be. Beyonce, Oprah, Harrison Ford, Bruce Springsteen, J-Lo, John Bon Jovi, Julie Roberts, the list goes on and on and on. And many of them are doing everything they can to get voters to the polls. They're knocking on doors, speaking at rallies, and some are literally running up to people on the street. Sir, for a dollar, which would you rather see a sequel to, Elf or Trump? <laughs> Elf. Yes, there you okay, go! There you yes. go! Have you voted yet? Uh, no. Okay, who are you going to vote for? Harris. Yes, right. yes, you know you can vote early. I just registered. I'm coming right now. Oh, amazing! Oh, perfect. oh my God, thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Oh, <laughs> thank you! Oh, it's too much. <laughs> Sir, Will Ferrell will kick your ass if you don't vote. Uh-oh, I'm voting. Okay. Yes. I'm, voting. I'm voting Saturday. I'm doing early voting. Yes. Andy, there's Will Ferrell and... And, and I forgot. Billy! Yeah. Sir, loud white men for Kamala, join the call. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Who are you voting for? Kamala! Yeah! What, what's your name? My name is Corey. Corey! Yeah. Corey for Kamala! <laughs> Joining me now is Emmy nominated actor, writer, comedian, and producer. Billy Eichner, who's not as scary as you seem in those videos. No, but I'm a lovely person. You're a lover. You're life. just like a lover. Um, <laughs> first of all, I love that you brought back Billy on the street. Thank so many you. people know what that is. Watch it, laugh. It brings laughter. And that you called yourself loud white men for Kamala. Mm -hmm. It was really effective. I mean, it drew 12 million views in just the first 24 hours you posted it. That's not what happens all the time. No. And I just want to ask you, like, how you view. What prompted you to do that and how you view the stakes in the moment that made you want to go out and do that with Will Ferrell? Yeah, it's the stakes that prompted me. You know, I have a platform from doing Billy on the Street for many years, and I, I couldn't imagine not trying to use it. You know, when I think about the consequences of Trump winning, you know, he's such a morally, ethically reprehensible, damaged human being, and yet the polls are so close. Um, but I also thought it was important not just to panic, because a lot of my friends were starting to panic. So I reached out to Will, and I said, let's do something loud and fun and exciting, because this should be joyful. You know, we can't just sit around and be stressed out about it. And luckily, Will said yes. He's done Billy on the Street before, but I think this is the most important one I've ever done. I love that you just Will, like Will Ferrell. I do want to, <laughs> I do want an elf sequel as a sidebar once we get through this election. Oh, we all do. If yeah. that's okay, if you can just put in a good word to your friend Will. I will. No, the other thing that's argument, you posted a much more, I, I guess I would call it a sobering video um, mm. on Instagram a couple weeks ago. It got also got a lot of attention. I want to play a part of it because what it struck me, you are very funny. You're funny in all these Billy in the Street videos, but this was pretty serious and sobering, and I just want to play it and we'll talk about it. He is very, very dangerous and not in the cool way that some of his fanboys think he is, okay? And I, am, I can feel it. I was out talking to voters yesterday. I did not like the vibe. So please do what you can here. You have to vote, especially if you're in a swing state, but we have to do more than vote. We have to knock on doors. We have to make calls or talk to your friends, text your friends, make sure they're voting. So I wanted to play it because it's a little startling from people who follow you so closely. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do learn how people are feeling in elections by talking to them. And you've been doing a lot of that. You've been politically active long before this cycle. Yeah. Where were you when you were talking to people? What alarmed you that prompted you to post that? Um, panic about Trump winning. Now, I know I just said we can't panic, but I think that all of these things, you know, we're human, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you are panicking about it and then you want to go do something joyful on the street. You know, it's a combination of these things. Mm -hmm. But I was starting to feel, this was a few weeks ago, I was yeah. starting to feel momentum waning a little bit. Yeah. And I just wanted to... Is that the vibes thing? Like what people were saying Exactly. To you? Right. And just, you know, it was something, a gut feeling. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to wake people up about what the consequences were here. And it's not enough to vote. And this is really my point, because I know we're on MSNBC and a lot of people have probably voted already and voting for Kamala. I watch a lot of MSNBC myself, but um, it's more, it's almost as important to volunteer mm -hmm. as it is to vote. And that's also one of the points I was trying to get across in that video. I've worked with Swing Left for years and it really makes a difference. And we have 48 hours here to win this thing. We know the polls are super close. You can make calls, you can knock on doors, mm -hmm. you can go to swingleft.org slash action. And it's easy, it's fun, and it's so much better to feel like you're helping the cause than to just scroll and panic. Even though you're panicking, that will make you feel better. 
<laughs> That's true. There's lots of things people can do, even in the last 48 hours, which is an important This message. is the most important time, you know, and you're going to want to look back. Even if he wins, God forbid, you're going to want to be able to say, I did what I could. I went the extra mile. You know, you don't want to regret it. We don't want to see what happened in 2016 happen again. So we need everybody out there watching this to go to swingleft.org slash, slash action. You can make calls, knock on doors. If you're near a swing state, they, org they organize the whole thing for you. And I'm telling you, we sent 12 buses from New York to Pennsylvania this morning to knock on doors. It's so great to see people. It's beautiful to see people engaging in politics and not just scrolling and not just panicking. It's a joyful thing. So I encourage everyone to do it. That's a powerful message for people to hear. OK, I want to ask you, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, I mean, you've been politically active before mm -hmm. this. Um, you famously had a campaign to, quote, glam up the midterms. That's right. Which That's is somebody right. who's been involved in a politics for a long time. I'm like, I, we could have always should have glammed up the midterms. I know, yeah. Make them exciting. Um, it was a pretty serious goal. You wanted more younger voters to get involved and engaged in the process. Mm -hmm. So. Tell me a little bit about that and, and how it worked and what you think works and doesn't work to get more younger voters involved, because that's a big question out there right. in politics. Well, this was 2018, so this is when we were trying to flip the House because Trump was in the White House, yep. and we needed to flip the House in order to try to get like some guardrails mm -hmm. against him, right? And we did, but I remember thinking about the midterms and thinking, you know, looking at the statistics, young people just didn't vote in the midterms. Old people don't vote in the midterms. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't vote in the midterms. And I thought, what can we do again to make this joyful, to glam it up, you know? And so we went all over the country. We did events, me and Wanda Sykes and athletes and Will Ferrell, and we went all over, and we were just trying to like make people more aware of how important the midterms were. And we did flip the house and young people did come out and vote. And I'm really proud of that. Glamming up the midterms worked. Yeah. Billy Eichner, it was such a pleasure. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you very for flattered. doing what you're doing and using your voice to be so active. It